guys, welcome back to the Game Day Show. This is episode 44. We're here for another Formula One episode. I'm Ethan Bass, your host. I'm here with... Seth Simon. And welcome back to the show, Seth. It's been an incredible start to the Formula One season. We have gone, I believe, eight races and nine races into the season. We are recording this on June 29th, my mistake. So it's June 29th. It's Silverstone this weekend. Super exciting weekend. It's one of my, you know, most excited races of the season, especially what happened last year on the first lap, but especially since it's basically the home of motorsport, especially Formula One. What are you excited about Silverstone about this weekend? Um, I mean, honestly, I'm really looking forward to hopefully seeing Lewis going crazy. I mean, listen, I'm not, honestly, like, I can't say I'm the biggest Mercedes fan, but it's always nice to see them, uh, drivers get um, home wins when they're in the home country. And I think that, that would be really awesome to see it happen again. And maybe a little more clean this time with no crashing, but, I really, it was exciting. And I mean, that would be cool. I mean, maybe if, even if like George Russell got his first win in, in, in Silverstone, that would be wild as well. So hopefully we'll see that. But overall, I just want to see some clean, good racing. I agree, but hear me out. On my podium, I want Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris, and George Russell. I don't care what order. The three British drivers. Yeah, listen, as much maybe as I would love podium. to see. As much as I would love to see that, I, it's very unlikely. Um, I can give you, I mean, I'll give you a little more probable podium. I'm probably going to go, I'm going to go this. I think it's going to be Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez on the podium. That is a good prediction. I want Carlos Sainz to win, especially, especially what happened last weekend. Um, but I think Verstappen will have an engine problem. That is my hot take of this race. Verstappen's going to have an engine problem, get out of the British Grand Prix for the second year in a row. But I got Charles Leclerc coming back and winning this race. I think he has a firecracker, especially what has been happening for the past couple of weeks. I think Leclerc is going to get it done. Um, honestly, it's, it's, this is a tough one for me because as much as I would love to see the Ferraris do good, they've been having a lot of issues with their car. And I'm not saying that it's over for them, but they're, I just don't think they'll be able to make the changes quick enough for at least this weekend. Verstappen has a massive lead in the championship. They, uh, I believe they almost flip-flop like Leclerc in the first five races had a massive lead, and now Verstappen does. But Ferrari has made some piss-poor decisions, especially uh, strategy decisions, higher management, um, especially when we talk about Monaco. They didn't really have the best of weekends. And, you know, the really last good weekend, especially for both drivers, was Australia when Charles won, I believe, his last race. So, um, yeah, so Ferrari needs to get their shit together. I mean, honestly, you you couldn't have said it any better. Honestly, I mean, the Ferrari, I think, is the faster car. is definitely faster yeah. than the Red Bull. But yeah. when it comes down to it, if you don't have the good strategy, if you don't, if you're not managing your tire as well, that's that's going to lead to it's going to lead to you losing. And that's where I think that the Red Bull can capitalize, and that's what they tend to do because they have quick pit stops. They know when the right time to come in, and they manage your tire as well. Something that Charles does really well is doing good on Saturday, but not really capitalizing on the Sunday. I mean, that's partially for I felt like when I was at the Miami Grand Prix uh, about a month and a half ago, it was amazing seeing Charles up there on pole. And then during the race, he kind of stepped back as Max Verstappen overtook him on lap nine. So you're really seeing in some of these Sunday, you know, on the races that the Red Bulls sometimes overtake them, like in Baku where, you know, Checo overtook him at the start. So, I think Charles is very good on Saturdays and not as good as Sundays, so that could be due to the Ferrari's engine problems and all of, you know, the shenanigans they have going on. Well, I think there's a lot of factors that probably come into that. I mean, for sure, you're not obviously going as many laps as you are in Sunday's race. So the car definitely has more of a possibility of breaking down and having issues with the car on Sunday. But at the same time, when you're qualifying, you're out there and you're open by yourself. Yeah, I mean, you could go, you could go as quick as you want then, but when the pressure's on you and there's a bunch of, and when there's 19 other drivers that are lining up next to you, then that, then that starts to get a little bit tough. You're going to have somebody breathing right down your back and putting the pressure on you. So I don't know. I don't know really know. Like you may not be handling the, the pressure as well as um, everybody thinking, everybody thinks you can. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of pressure, especially being in that Ferrari seat, you know, it's been the top team for such a long time, you know, back in the nineties with Schumacher, obviously in the two thousands and then, yeah, they've just been struggling for a little bit. Um, so another like person I should say that's been struggling is Nicholas Latifi. There's been a lot of talk that he could be replaced by Oscar Piastri, especially at Silverstone, but I think 
they're going to hold off till the end of the season and bring in Piastri. What are your thoughts on Latifi, especially what he has done, you know, for the past, like the season and like his crash and stuff? Like, what are your thoughts on Latifi? I think he isn't a terrible driver. I can't, I mean, if you're out there, you, you can't be bad. Yeah. But I think that he's not as good as, obviously he's not as good as, all of the other, as everybody else. And I feel part of it is in do, has to do with the car that he's in. I mean, it's not the greatest. Williams is not the greatest car right now. But you see Alex Albon pushing the car, though, to P10, P9, which is fantastic for Williams. I think that the only reason that Williams would have the reason to keep him is because he brings – them money and that's kind of why he has his seat and that's the way that it is I mean, Yo's capital, I, the uh, the team principal said they don't need the money anymore they're fine well that, that was just the COVID thing so then to me I feel like it's a no-brainer I don't think there's a problem with the TV I don't think they have an issue with him he's not a not a nice person like yeah. and when it comes down to it I don't think it has anything to do with liking him or not which is always a good thing because if you really are going to be replaced I'd rather it be because you're just not yeah. You're not at the pace. You're not at the pace to be in the car other than having issues in the garage and in, um, uh, in the pit lane and all that and having issues with the people behind the scenes that that's the reason why you send why you send the driver away. So for me, when it comes down to it, like Latifi, obviously, I just don't think that he's he's up to snuff with what everybody's doing and the way that everybody's performing now. If Everybody crashed. I mean, spin outs happen. So you can't really do that. But I'm just talking about in the race. Like while he's racing, he's clearly not doing as good as, as I think the car can do because we've seen with Albon, he's able to push the car, and what for whatever reason that is, I mean, that's just wrong. But I just don't think that he, I think it's I think his time is up. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at Formula One, you're looking at the 20 best drivers in the world. I just don't think he's the 20th best driver in the world. I mean, you're looking at like you said it perfectly. Like he doesn't have the pace in the car and. You know, as I love Canadian sports, he's always had like a special like place in my heart. Like when I started watching, just because he's Canadian, and I like always loved watching his interviews. He's a great guy and stuff. But I just don't think he has the pace to be in Formula One. Uh, I think Oscar, though, Oscar Piastri, man, that dude's special. I think he could do some damage. Um, see, I don't really. I mean, I don't really know much, but about the the guys that come from F two, F three because I just don't really pay attention to that as much. But as we've seen in the past couple of years, there have been a lot of people that come in, Juan Yujo, uh, Yugi Sonoda. So there are a lot of people that come up and, I mean, even Latifi came up from there as well. Yeah. And Azepin as well. But <laughs> the, the thing is, a lot of those guys just, they, those are the people that are being replaced every so often because they aren't as good as they need to be. And I think that it just all depends. Like, there's the top guys. There's people that you know are going to always be racing. Lewis Hamilton's going to always be there. Leclerc is on some, like, crazy 20-year contract, and he's going to be there for a while. And the those, the there's, oh, those are the guys that you know are going to be there. But then there's the lower-down spots that you really got to find the right person to fill those. But, like, you know? if you're looking at – I don't know if you know too much about Oscar, but Oscar is like a Charles Leclerc or like a George Russell or Lana Norris who – is coming off an F2 championship and F3 championship and another championship, I believe, before that in a span of three years. That's insane. So Oscar is coming into Formula One like like Lando, George, or Charles, where he's a special talent, whereas, let's say, Latifi, Joe, Schumacher, and uh, Mazepin were just coming in as pay drivers or they needed to fill the seat. So I believe Oscar is a special talent. He can do some damage, but... Um, there's a guy who's similar to Nicholas Latifi actually in a hash right now, Mick Schumacher. He has caused, I believe, more damage, more money damage than Latifi. Schumacher did show good pace in Canada. He was in for running first, four, first points in Formula One, but unfortunately, they also had an engine failure. Ha like, do you see Haas sticking on with Schumacher one more season? Like, what do you see Haas doing? I think that the lineup that they have now is perfectly fine. You can't get rid of Schumacher. Schumacher, the right. only reason that he's – he's having problems because he's in that car. Do you think that, like, because we saw last year with Mazepin, because Mazepin was doing absolutely garbage shit, 
But then Mick Schumacher is out qualifying and uh, pacing. But then when this when Magnussen came in, he's thrown that car amazing. And besides Canada, I don't think Mick. I mean, maybe Miami, like when he was in the points and then he crashed into Seb. But I don't think Mick has shown the like, good pace compared to Magnussen. But do you think Schumacher's in the name just because of his last name? Part of it is yes. I think that where he is is because of the name but i think he can keep the seat for other reasons he has the skill to back it up i think schumacher will be a good driver i think the problem that everybody sees is there are a lot of young drivers that are really good and they don't understand that there's for a normal driver just like not to be the best like george russell lando norris charles yeah. Leclerc. they're all amazing they're great and they're literally like 23 years old yeah. they're already it takes time to develop what does mick schumacher is probably like 20 something He's in his low 20s. He, give him time. I think that he's where he is. He's in Haas. He's, be, he's being driven in a Ferrari engine because of his name. And I think that that's probably why that in, down the road, if it ever happens, if he winds up driving for Ferrari, that's because his name is Schumacher. But other than that, I think that the skill, it eventually get there. And he's in a tough car. It's a tough car yeah. to drive in. And think, Magnuson, yeah. he's, got no, he's got nothing to lose. He's already been gone. He's just driving. He's going balls to the wall, and he's just going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think also what I got to say is that even though we're shit-talking some of these guys, I feel like that they're still the 20 best drivers in the world. They're still absolutely unbelievable, especially Latifi. Like, all these guys are unbelievable at what they do um, because there's only 20 guys in the sport, and you really have to take your chances in Formula 2 to be in Formula It's really hard to get into Formula 1 if you don't have money or you don't have a name or something. So credit to all these guys for getting in. They are absolutely ridiculous. A very famous figure in Formula One, um, one of my favorite drivers, I believe he actually is one of my favorite, like my favorite driver. I believe he's your favorite driver too. Daniel Ricardo. What is going on, man? So I like ever since I watched the sport um, back in August, you know, ever since I watched Drive to Survive, Daniel has always stuck out to me he's always had a great personality and stuff and he's always had a firecracker drive especially when he looked back at what he did in 2018-17 with Red Bull um, even with Red Bull in 2020 he had put a good show but ever since he's gone to McLaren I mean he did get that win in Monza he's just been struggling like below par expert you know he hasn't been performing it pains me to say it but it's just he's just not good he, he lost he lost whatever it is and i don't think he's a bad driver i think he's really good i think he's one of the best he is an amazing i really think that he's like he's up there as one of the best drivers there. i mean he's, what does he have he's just like 17 wins no no 12, no 12, 12, seven seven and eight, i'm going a little eight, bit eight, seven eight. wins no, a eight. lot of people a lot of people don't get a win so it's impressive in its own right, and I think that he is good. I'm, if we're being honest, I just don't think the McLaren is a fit, and they're not building the car for him because we've seen this before, and we see it a lot with Red Bull. They favor a driver, and I'm not saying that they're doing that at McLaren. I just think that they see Lando as the future, and they're adapting the car more to the way that he likes to drive, and I just don't think Ricardo can adjust to that. It was one thing in the beginning of the season last year, and he wasn't doing great in the beginning. And I was, and I was like, "Oh, it's just because he's got to get used to the car." Yeah. And then the he's season started going on, right? And the season continued, and then he kept doing just okay. And then he got his win, and that was fantastic. That was like one of the happiest moments of my life. I've never, I mean, it was the first season watching the sport, and my favorite driver gets a win after seeing Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton trade wins the whole entire season. It was a nice. A nice breath of fresh air to see Ricardo be the one guy that gets the win. Well, my second race I ever watched. I was a lucky guy. Like I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, know. Like he was doing all the struggling, and uh, it just sucks, man. Because like he is such a great guy, and like he laughs at literally everything. Like if you just watch an interview or you watch like a YouTube video of him, you will smile ninety nine percent of the time. And I think that he would be a great person to have in any. In any um, uh, in any garage, any bed, any any team, yeah, any team. You can put him out there, and he would just he lights up the room. They, everybody that he works with, probably they all like him. 
So, and I think that's why I don't know if he's going to leave McLaren because McLaren, like McLaren, wants to work with him. It's not like they don't like him. Like they, McLaren, right. everyone loves him. He just has to step up and do what he does, and he hasn't been doing that. And but McLaren wants to work with him and make him better. So, even if even if they don't sign him back. I still think that there should be a place for him in F1. He's he's that kind of driver. He's good enough to be on a team. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. There's no reason for him not to be in the sport. He's just he's just a good driver. I mean, if it's not McLaren, then it's got to be another team. I think. Which team do you think? I mean, it's tough to say at this point. The way that things are looking, he would probably wind up on a lower team. But if we're being honest, I mean. As- that may not be a bad thing for him. But if you're looking at, okay, if you got Daniel Ricard, the only team I'd possibly see him go to if McLaren dumps him or if they like part ways is Alfa Romeo since Joe. He has shown great pace, but he has up for contract. He only signed a one-year deal. Do you bring in Daniel or do you bring in Joe? So that would be interesting. And that was actually the point that I was going, I was about to make was that Bottas – he got sent to Alfa Romeo, which I mean, you sign wherever you want. If you really want to drive, then you sign with whatever team. Like whoever gives you an opportunity to go there. Bottas went to a clearly worse team. Obviously, having no choice as he was no longer with Mercedes because they pulled up Russell. But Bottas isn't doing bad. He's showing that that Alfa Romeo car can it can make moves. It could do things. It could be in the top. It could be in the top ten. He could be even higher than that. I mean, he was competing with Lewis, so I think they can be done. I think Daniel Ricardo on Alfa Romeo, I don't know if this is the greatest fit. In the end of the day, I would keep Joe because he's a young guy. And if you're building up the team like that, I think it's good to keep that in the Ferrari system because one day maybe if he does get good enough. And listen, most of the time it doesn't happen. But if he gets good enough, he could always fill in the seat for fill, it, fill in the seat at Ferrari. If that's if you keep you just keep the young guys in the system, you know, I think that a good place that. Ricardo could probably land. I think that he wouldn't be bad at Aston Martin. Let's say in a year or two, because we've already heard that Vettel isn't going to stay around for, is, isn't sticking around for another 20 years like Hamilton wants to. Once Vettel retires, I mean, Ricardo said that he's not retiring because he's got the Vegas Grand Prix coming up. So he's staying around for that. So if Vettel does retire, I think that that's not a bad spot for Ricardo to land. That is, of course, if they part wins. Yeah, I mean, there's so many circumstances, you know. I think the contract is that Ricardo has to agree to part ways since you can't really terminate a contract before it's over. So, at least in Formula 1. There's one last thing I want to do, and this is kind of a fun activity I thought of. Let's rank the 20 drivers, like, based off our favorite, and but we have to agree, like, where each goes. So, we're going to start. Okay, sure. So we're going to start uh, with 20 and we're going to go down to zero. Do you know all 20 drivers off the top of your head? I should be able to do it, yeah. I should be good. Who do you have as your least favorite driver? This season. All right, let me just think of who we got. Um, This season. This season. Okay. I think my least favorite driver, Verstappen. I'm going Verstappen. I know you're not going to agree with that. I I absolutely despise him. I can't. I can't. So you say Verstappen. I'm going to write this down. So you say Verstappen. I'm going to go with, uh, you know what? I'm just going to say Latifi. Latifi, Lisa, okay. Okay, so who's your 19th? After that, uh, Albon. Albon. What's wrong with Alex Albon, man? Nothing's wrong with him. I just feel like he's just nothing, like, nothing special to me, you know? I he's just really not, like, doesn't mean much, you know. He's just see for me, like I don't, I don't dislike any drivers. So like this is pretty no, me neither. I just, I, Verstappen's the one I said like I hate him, but other than that, it's kind of just comes down to like I'm... you like do you respect Verstappen. Not or really. Not hate him like like you don't want to flat out. I don't think he should have won the championship last year. I'm like okay. all that like. Okay, but that's you know that's Latifi's fault. But like what? But like. If Verstappen wins it clear, like, over Charles this season, like, when... Sure, sure. I give him the respect. But other than that, I don't really... Uh, I, I just don't like him. I don't think he's a good person. You respect that he's the top two driver on the grid right now. 
That I can I, that I can say. I can't admit that he's bad. I can admit that he's not like he's good. That I can admit. I just don't like. Him. Okay. Okay. I actually have Albon nineteen too. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, um. Eighteen. Who do you got? Oh, uh, scroll. I don't have a problem with him. I don't think there's an issue with him. I don't really mind that his dad bought a seat or anything like that, like most people would. I just don't like, once again, like nothing really special with Stroll, you know? I agree with you. Daddy's cast right here. Lance Stroll, I have 18 too. Um, 17, Joe, once again, nothing special. I can agree with you. First year, I don't really have any thoughts about him. Just uh, 16. Well, so what is that? 16? Yeah. Tonoda. <laughs> okay. Yuki. Nothing wrong with Yuki. I just, you know, just, he's just a driver. He does he does what he needs to do. He goes out there. He goes out there and he does his thing. I like, I like Yuki, but like, I don't know. Like, if you saw him on Drive to Survive, like, he is a pretty, like, much of a comedian. I don't know if you saw the episode about him, but it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I don't, I may not have, but regardless, like, he's just like, I don't know. All right, let's see. Who do, so we got 15 now so we did okay I'm trying to think of the grid going down um 15 i, know I guess i guess uh i'll put i'll put bob has never been a big fan of him okay i think that like he's he's an okay driver but there's not much personality to him and there's really nothing like there is personality to him if you watch you know, some YouTube videos and stuff. But, like, playing off his interviews, there is no personality. I'm going – see, for me, my 15, I really like this guy. And – but, like, the problem is with me for him is, like, he hasn't scored a point yet, Mick Schumacher. But I really like the guy outside of Formula 1. I feel like he's the sweetest guy ever. So, I'm going with Mick Schumacher at 15. But. All right, 14, Akon. Oh, no, no. I, I love Akon. I do not agree with that. 14, I have both us. Okay. All right. Yeah. Akon, I'm never really been a big fan of Akon. Uh, why? Why? He's hilarious. I love the guy. Nah. He's. Uh, what a 13. 13 is. Hmm. It's getting tough now. Uh, 13. I'm trying to think of the teams. All right. Hold on. Oh, uh, Gasly. Okay. Gasly. Yeah. Gasly at 13. Okay, 13, I have Fernando. Oh, I have Fernando a lot higher on mine. I uh, 12, 12, I'll give it to Schumacher. I, I like Schumacher. I think he's good. Uh, I'll go Gasly, so we're like that. All right. Ten, 11. Um, a minute. I know my 11. I guess Checo. Okay. Checo at 11. I like Checo. Cool guy. Um, My 11 is going to be George Russell. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that. Wow, that's low. Okay. Well, um, that's on. All right. Could you re rerun what we have so far? Because now that we're in the top 10, I need to know what I said so far. Okay. So, I believe 20th, I said Latifi, you said Verstappen. Okay. 19th, I said... Who did, I didn't even write this down, actually, so I fucking have no idea what I said, to be honest with you. 19, I remember 18th, I said Stroll, but... I 19 people said Albon, I believe. Oh, yeah, Albon, Stroll. All right, I, I forgot. I'm sorry, Bath Productions fans. I forgot what I said, uh, but let's keep rolling. I guess so. So if you say, if you say driver you already said, then I'll probably know, like, if she said it. Um. So we in 10? We're in the top 10 now? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to on my fingers figure out. So we got the McLaren boys. I haven't said them yet. Mercedes. I haven't said yet. We got Vettel, Alonso. Um, who am I? Mi oh, Magnussen. So I'm missing three other. I'm missing three other people. I don't know who I haven't said. I'm gonna just say my pick. I'm going uh, Magnussen ten. I think that's fair. I'll agree with you on that. I'll go Magnussen ten. Mutual. Um, nine is going to be tough. I don't know. Like, damn, this is so tough. Like, I'm going to go with, ooh, I'm going to go with, uh, SD Bestie, SD Ben Alcon. 
nine, Alonzo. Alonzo nine. Yeah. I like the old heads, you know. I have respect for them for staying in the sport, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, did I already say Checo? No. Right? No, you have not said him yet. I'm going Checo eight. I like Checo. Um, eight. I guess we'll go. We'll go Russell eight. I'll give Russell eight for me. Hey, hey, respectable, respectable. Seven's tough. I'm going Vettel. Everyone I, mean, I think I'm going to agree with you on that. Seven, I'll, I'll put Vettel at seven. With Sebi. Great guy. Love, love Sebastian. I, I like Vettel a lot. I think he's good. Hey, we're coming on the wire. Six. Ooh, I'm going Max. Max at six. Yeah. I don't know who I'm missing, man. I have one driver that is not in my head right now. That so I two of the Ferrari boys, two of the McLaren guys, right? Ferrari, McLaren, and Lewis Hamilton. That would be my. T- I think those guys are in my top five. I just don't know who the six would be. You are missing. Ooh, who are you missing? I think you're missing. Checo, Charles, George, Carlos, Lewis, Lando, Botas, Alcon, Alonso, Gasly, Magnussen, R- Richardo, Vettel, Sonoda. So, um, who else? Who else, bro? Uh, I, I don't even know. I wait, let me. Okay, hold on. Let me. Let me. I'm gonna. Am I able to? Yes, I can. Okay, hold on. Let me just go on the app real quick. I'm. I'm just gonna look through the, because I, I would like to. I, I would like to see who the sixth guy is. Let's see. Okay. All right, standings. Um, Lando, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gasly, Magnuson, Yuki. Uh-huh. I, oh. I said, okay, hold on. Nico Hulkenberg, well, he doesn't really count. He wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Who didn't I say? I feel like we may, I may have, we may have just miscounted. All right, regardless, I think my, uh, let's, I'll just go to the top five then. I'll go to the five, I'll, I'll go to the top five because wow. I don't know who the six guy would be. Do, do we not, I feel, well, we missing someone, but. It's okay. Number five for me, I'm going Charles Leclerc. I I think, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll agree with you on that. Five, Charles Leclerc. Four, I'm going with Lewis Hamilton. My four, Carlos Sainz is four. Okay. My three is Carlos Sainz. My three, I'll be Lando. I'll put Lando three. Okay. Two, I have Lando. Uh, two, I'll give it to Lewis. And one, you know who it is. Yeah, Daniel Ricardo. I, I can't. I, I love that guy with uh, my whole heart. I just, I think he's great. A great. He was a good, good driver, struggling a little bit this season, but a good person. I just think, I don't know. He's just the most likable person Fantastic. on the grid. Love I it. think that. I think that that's a solid list. If we're going based on personal opinion of these people, of course, obviously, this would be the worst list ever if we were going based on their actual skill. But well, um, I'm just opinion, like on like like who we like. Um, next time we'll do skill. I mean, that's probably going to change in a while. Um, but yeah, we'll see. All right, Seth, I appreciate you coming on the show. Hope we get have you soon. Have a fun weekend, everyone at Silverstone. Who's ever going in every form of the one race so far this season has been fantastic. We hope to see a good championship fight between hopefully Charles and Max. Let's hope Max does not run away with it. All right, Seth, thank you for joining. I'm Ethan Basher. We'll see you later, baby.